Hello, everybody, and welcome to Casual Caffeinated Conversations. I again have my coffee, and I'm super excited because I'm joined by Mary. Thank you so much, Mary, for joining me. How are you today? I am well. Very happy to be here with you. Perfect. We're going to play a game first. So I'm going to say a word, and you have to say the first word you think of. Okay. Are you ready? Sure. Mountains. Beautiful. Life. Fun. Community. Supportive. Happiness. Consistently. Mental illness. Difficult. Connection. Important. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, this one is uh, only a one word answer. Okay. Why is mental health a hard, scary, uncomfortable topic to talk about? One word answer, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Stigma. It's funny. So every, nobody has said the same word for this question. Everyone's been completely different. And yesterday I was interviewing someone. Um, stigma came up as a word that they wanted to get rid of. Like, let's get rid of the word stigma, which is, it's funny because, but that's what started the conversation around mental health. Is the word. I believe it. Okay, this one you can have a long answer to if you want. Oh, how okay. can someone ask for help when they don't know how? I'm going to say that um, asking for help takes practice and mm. it's, um, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's frightening. Uh, it's a, it puts you in a place that you don't want to be. Um, and so we try everything we possibly can to not be in that place. And so not ask for help. Um, but rehearsing is very helpful. Yeah. Um, practicing saying the words and choosing as best you can the right person to practice with. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's important to even just practice with yourself, write it down. Absolutely. Talk in the mirror. And sure. Find the safest person you can, right? Yeah. And there's so many different ways that we can go about asking for help. But I find that that really truly is the hardest thing in any journey. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. And, um, it doesn't always work, which okay. is, which adds to the challenge. And so um, I, I work with, uh, with people and we talk a little bit about how, how you can ask for help and then not get it and how easy it is to just refuse to ask for help again. And I remind people that um, quite often we'll take our car to a mechanic mm -hmm. uh, and are unhappy with the work that's done but that doesn't mean we don't look for another mechanic That's and we're right. willing to ask again for our car. We need to be willing to ask again for our mental health. And it's funny, right? Like with, with everything else, we have something, right? So we have our own family doctor. We have our own mechanic. We have a hairdresser. And when we're not happy with those, we go and find somebody else. But when it yeah. comes to our own personal selves, we don't, you know, we let no, we will go completely all the way out and then we're stuck. And we forget that it's, um, it's a consumer's market. It is, uh, there are, you know, when you, when you have a helping professional, if there's no rapport or if, um, if there's no, um, chemistry even, yeah. um, it doesn't mean we have to stay there. It means yeah, that we right. can move on to somebody else. There's, there are a lot of wonderful professionals out there. Mm -hmm. um, that um, are easy to find. You, it does take effort and it does take vulnerability to reach out and uh, spend a few minutes with them to find out if it is a good fit. Yeah. Um, and if it's not a good fit, find a different fit. We'll do it for clothes. Yeah. We'll, we'll go out and we'll try on a pair <laughs> of jeans. And if we don't like them, it doesn't mean we buy them. We don't wear um, them. We go to a different shop. And the is... pair. Yeah. Yeah. And the rapport is super important. It is. When you're working with a professional, you still need it. You still need the rapport. Absolutely. If you don't have the rapport, that's really difficult to ask for trust and be vulnerable. That's right. That's perfect. Thank you so much for that. 
Okay, if you could change the narrative around one line or one word, what would it be? One line or one word regarding mental health? Yeah. Okay, um, I could change the narrative. And I'll give you an example. So one, one person said they wanted to change the narrative around men's mental health because when he was raised, it was do not cry, suck it up, buttercup, move on, be tough. And then when you hit adulthood and you have a family and, you know, that's not okay. You need to be talking to your partner about everything. You need to be able to grow and sucking it up and moving on isn't allowing you to do that. It's really, it's really challenging. So um, in the example you gave, the person would like to change the narrative around men's mental health. And so yes. I guess for me, I would like to change the narrative for um, first responder mental health. Mm -hmm. and this and the stoic culture that exists within it and how can we do that um i think it's really important again to eliminate the stigma to recognize that mental health um needs to be maintained it needs to be um nurtured it needs to be when it's when it's um causing a problem it needs to be recognized as a very normal thing that everybody goes through at one point or another it uh, mm -hmm. nobody is immune and first responders who are typically um stoic helpers are also not immune and and so i think society needs to recognize that just because first responders are in these helping roles doesn't mean they that it's bad if they ever find that they need a helping hand. Right, and it's funny because we had actually talk about that with Cynthia and, you know, um, first responders have an extraordinary job and therefore they need extraordinary help. And that's what Cynthia was repeating and it, and it is true, we don't think about that. We think of first responders as they're the ones that are coming to help us. Yeah. but it's almost like we don't think of them as people. No, like, we don't. And so they're, they're coming out to help us. That's it. Yeah. They're always there to make things better. And then we just forget about them. And then they, they take whatever they've seen, or they've, you know, taken the emotion that they've, um, they've gleaned from the situation and they bring it home and they have to figure out where to put it. And uh, people who have been helped by first responders don't have to think after the event is over, and their day is better. They don't give those who help them a second thought. And I think society no. needs to change that. I think so too. And I think that's a really good point that we need to work on, right? Is we need to recognize the different industries and what their jobs are and what kind of help they need to keep their jobs because we need them a lot. So let's start changing things. Okay, last question. Okay. My word for the year is action. What is your word for the year? Kindness. That's why. I think we, well, for me, I think it's important to meet people where they are and realize that, you know, their journey is their own. And probably if we offer a little kindness, we can learn a little bit more, help a little bit more and uh, make a better situation. And that goes within ourselves too. I think we have to look at inside and treat ourselves with a little more kindness than we tend to do. Um, and recognize that, you know, just because maybe something isn't going well, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it can't be improved. We can't start over, we can't have a do over and make a better thing happen. So I think by treating people with kindness, I think, allows me to be more graceful for the interactions I have with myself and with others and the things that I do. And I think it makes, it makes for a, a better, a better sense of self. Yeah, I think so too. And, and when, when you can put a smile on someone's face, it changes not only their day, but yours, right? Oh, well, sure. So simple, tiny acts of kindness are super important. This is fun. <laughs> yeah. 
thanks so much for joining me and thank you for tuning in for another episode of casual caffeinated conversations